Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we are taking a deep dive into XRP. We're just following what I've been doing on the channel over the last week, diving into Litecoin, Cardano, Ethereum, Bitcoin, just getting a little bit deeper into each of these cryptocurrencies so that you can get a better understanding of what it is that I do on a chart to understand what timeframes we're looking for, how long we can expect a pump to last and potential price resistance points. And of course, we're going to look at some price targets as well. But these are all things that I think are extremely important, especially when the pump has begun, because this is when newbies, when noobs, noobs, whatever you want to call yourselves, when new investors come into the market, they get suckered in to the tops of these pumps. So if you can identify these pumps during or at least before or during it so that you don't get suckered into it, this is going to save you a ton of money. You know if you've been sucked into these before, buying at the top, waiting them out, hoping they get back to that price, just even the, the cost, the loss on your capital, how much you can save and how much you have wasted, how much time you've wasted when you could be investing that into something else. So that's what we're going to look at today on XRP as an example, and then look at a potential similar project to XRP, XLM. Sorry for the XRP guys who might get offended by that. But look at something that is in a little bit of a different setup, which may have a little more potential at the moment. So if you like the sound of that, let me know, hit the like button down below, subscribe to the channel if you want to understand more about charting and timeframes, all of the stuff you need to know in order not to get suckered into these pumps and how to find them before they pump. So if you do like that, let me know, hit that subscribe button down below. Now, the big thing I want to mention is we're not marrying these coins. We're not getting sucked into all of the primitive primal BS between which coin's better and this thing's going to 10 bucks, etc. right? It's, it's fun, but it's also stupid. We see it in the comments. People say, I hate on certain projects, or you might even hate it on yourself. You're bashing something. They're just a little bit too emotionally involved in their own, yeah, their own little bit of funds. So I'm going to make mention here. This is a video that we looked at or that I put out uh, around Easter, it was on Easter day because I can see where I am here. So this is the video looking at XRP as a trade because this is a good setup, basically a good setup pattern. We can see some levels that we're targeting. That's a good trade. So this is on the 3rd of April. Today we are the 11th of April. So let's have a look at the coin market caps of these cryptos, 2 trillion total market cap and XRP is now sitting at 67.7 billion at around $1.50. Uh, the other project I'm looking at here is XLM. Here's Stellar at 14 billion. So nearly 62 cents. Call it 62 cents. Also had a pretty decent run this week, but nothing like XRP. XRP has been off the charts. Now, Bitcoin has nearly touched an all-time high again, which means it just pushes that market into the extreme greed phase. For some reason, whenever we get into that all-time high of Bitcoin, everyone gets greedy and the markets go nuts again. As we can see over the last day, week, month, the greed levels have been down or at least just to that steady greed rather than the extreme greed. Uh, XRP, let's start here on this chart. So like I said, we're going to look at timeframes, measuring them. You can easily do this yourself with tradingview.com. There's a link to this in the description down below. So use that if you need to. Super easy. There's a free version. XRP, USD, currently sitting at around $1.35 on Poloniex. I'm using Poloniex here because it has the most amount of price, uh, yeah, price data against the US dollar. Now, the first thing I'm looking at is the FIB. So this is using this tool on the side, FIB extension, a FIB retracement on this one, measures the same thing. Basically, top is a $3.50, bottom here is around 10 cents. All we're doing is connecting the, uh, anchoring the all-time high to a major low. And we're looking for our 50% point because we know 50% areas are usually, ex uh, resistance, resistance points or support. So they act as very good support and resistance. This one is at a dollar eighty. And currently we're at a dollar thirty-five thereabouts, dollar thirty-six. To get to a dollar eighty, we're only looking at about twenty-six percent. It's probably changed a little now. Thirty-two percent. So from that point we stand to make about thirty-two percent before we may hit some sort of resistance. Now this could slice through and go to 220 because that's also another strong FIB level. So if we measure that, that's about 60%. So all I'm doing here is just figuring out whether these are parameters that are worthy of your risk reward. Because right now, 
our risk is this market falling back to test some alt uh, to test the previous resistance levels, make them support, or even this resistance level, maybe that make that support. So that's coming back to about a 30, 35 percent. If we come all the way back here, 50 or so percent. So we stand to look. This is how we're measuring our reward to risk. We could be at 30 percent, could be at 60 percent. Of course, this could just blow up all the way to the high here, and there's about 150 percent. Call it 100. Yeah, 150 odd percent. So this is what we're doing to measure that. Some people will just say, just hold the thing forever. It's going to go to 10 bucks or $100. Generally, these people are the ones who buy at these tops or they happen to get lucky buy the bottoms and they watch it run all the way to $3 and then fade. If you were one of those people in 2017, now you understand. You, you know that feeling of seeing this thing run. You're not selling anything because you're hopeful of five bucks or $10. It never comes. And then you watch your investment do nothing for three years and now you only stand to make if you're lucky lose 50 percent of your initial investment from buying up at these levels you understand that you get it new people generally don't understand that and they get suckered into these rallies this is xrp usd so that's what i'm measuring here looking at my reward to risk uh, as i said from that video we were identifying this back here in late march early April. We could have got in earlier, but your money would just be doing nothing for about three months while it accumulated again. Now we did talk about it through these levels. I was looking at this to break down. The SEC ruling came out and absolutely destroyed it. I just thought we would come back and test these levels again because that's historically what Ripple has done for the last five or six years, however long it's been out. So if Ripple's done that in the past, I'm expecting it to do it again. Back to the chart. XRP USD. All right, so that's what we're looking at there. I'm going to look at XRP ETH because has ETH been a better investment than Ripple? Most people don't want to hear it, but yes, it has been. Ripple has fallen against Ethereum since late 2018. So 2019, 2020, early 2021, call it two and a bit years. Ethereum has been the better investment so far. We do know Ripple can go on massive hikes. Now I'm calling it Ripple XRP interchangeably. If you want to argue that in the comments, by all means, go for go for gold. Now we're looking at XRP BTC, and this is where the time frames come in. So you can do this on your charts as well. Otherwise, follow the channel. And we're going to keep tracking these, and we've done this for Cardano, for Litecoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin. We follow these, and we understand where we are positioned in the market and how long we have to go in a particular run, more or less. When people are looking for what is this going to do by the end of April, that's not how markets work. Markets don't work in that way. So as soon as you can get yourself out of that mindset to figure out what the price is going to do by the end of the month, the better off you're going to be. Next, start measuring time frames themselves. The market doesn't give a shit what the price is going to be on the 30th of June or on the 15th of April. It looks at time frames. And what we've got here is XRP Bitcoin. Reason is... Bitcoin is less risky. Ripple is most risky. Ripple can tend to, uh, tends to go on these massive runs and then absolute dumps. Uh, and you pretty much lose 95 to 97% of your Bitcoin value. So say you were unlucky and you bought one Bitcoin's worth of XRP. I know I keep calling it Ripple. XRP in May of 2017, because Bitcoin was only four or five grand, something like that back then you would have lost 95% of it by the end of that year. Just within six months, you'd have 95% less Bitcoin. And this pattern tends to repeat time and time again in XRP. You can see it here. We've gone these massive long 114 weeks of a downtrend, 29 weeks of a downtrend, 156 weeks of a downtrend. That's three years, mind you, three years that you've had less Bitcoin, less everything than investing it somewhere else. You might as well have held it in fiat currency. So this is kind of hard, the hard truth. If you're a firm believer of XRP and you just don't want to hear it, you're going to call me names in the comments, go for gold. This, this is just what it is. The market's just telling us these numbers and I'm just interpreting them. So looking, uh, looking closer into the market at the moment, um, we are now on about a three to four week move. All right, so what I wanna look at next is how long are the moves up? How long do they usually last when XRP pumps? 
we've got one here, four weeks. Now I wanna have it at least, ideally I wanna have about a 100% pump, but I've measured a few which are a little less just to give us some more data points. This one's 110, 120% pump, so that's four weeks. This one here was four weeks, and it was a very decent pump. We can measure it from this point to the high, 1400%, very decent. And that's it, it lasted four weeks, and then it corrected. Quite a strong correction, but then it went on another massive move. And that's the last time we, we saw one more massive move out of it, and that was a 900%. So from this small move on the graph, on the chart, was more than this huge massive move here. You can see that. So it can be very easy to not understand what you're actually looking at here in terms of percentages. Let's look at this percentage here to this high. They're about, say, 2,000%, probably a little more there as I just fell a little short. But 2,000%, that's awesome. This is against your Bitcoin value as well, remember. This took four weeks. This took four weeks. This took four weeks. This was seven weeks, but it didn't really do anything. It was just holding up the market for seven weeks because it eventually went lower. The move... 70, call it 80% if you want to be optimistic about it. So it's only an 80% move. We need to look at bigger moves as well because we are risking our Bitcoin here, risking it on something that we know eventually falls for six months to three years. This move, one week, 188%, call it 200%, okay? Optimistically, 200%, 15 weeks long, but all the gains were done in one week, then it fell, came back, fell, came back, and then eventually died. Now we have six weeks, a six week move of only 60%. Then we had a two week move. This was uh, just before the, uh, this was buying the Flare token for the Flare network, the Spark token for the Flare network. Then it died, then the SEC ruling, uh, suing Ripple dropped. Then we had a five week move up of 250%. Now we're currently in a, four, we're almost four weeks old into this 220% move. So I ask you, with the data that Ripple has given us over the last one, two, three, four, five, six and a half years, what do you think the chances are of it moving more than about six weeks in its current up move? The chances are very low, considering we've only seen a seven week move up, and that was in a counter trend. This was in a bear market, and it did seven weeks in a counter trend. This was six weeks in a bear market, remember that. This was two weeks, and we were starting to turn here. In bull markets, in uh, XRP's bull markets, it does four weeks, four weeks, four weeks. Get that, okay? so. In a bull market, we can expect to see about four weeks. And if we want to be optimistic about it because we're just very hopeful, let's say five weeks. So we're getting very close to the end of this five week period. That's not to say that it won't go longer. It's very possible it could, but the probabilities aren't there from what I can see in XRP. So for me, jumping on a trend this late, even if it could go double from this point, it's probably too high risk. And this is how I'm measuring the risk to reward because some people don't understand the timeframes and how long these markets have energy for. And we've seen in XRP that it tends to have energy of about four weeks. If we're lucky, about six weeks. In a bear market, seven weeks is the longest that we've seen here. 15 weeks is the longest we've seen uh, in the bear market late in 2018. But all the, all the gains were made in the first week. So looking here as well, I'm using our Fib extension tool again, we're coming up to our 50% level. So if we happen to have another week left and we moved to the 50%, there's 12%. We have the potential to fall back maybe 30 odd percent, maybe a little more, come back and test these lows. Maybe we don't go that far, maybe we, we test just the highs of the lows, which is still about 25% loss. If we're very optimistic and we have another one to two weeks left and we come up to test 61%, which are the highs back here. I'm always looking for support and resistance and price cluster areas, which could stop the market. Then this is the level back here, which is about 3000 Satoshis, gives us about 30% gain from where we currently are. That's why this, that's why jumping on the end of a run is very high risk. Basically what I can see here is it's too risky for me. The run was started, you know, about two weeks ago was a good chance to get in and I think we're getting towards the end of this run. 
the trade that we're looking at that was back late March, early April, which we talked about here in this video here, April altcoin gems, and then we're looking at XRP. This move has netted to the current price about 140%. That's pretty good against our Bitcoin value. So easily doubling Bitcoin value. Now, that's XRP. That's my view of it at the moment. I don't, I'm, I'm not gonna get into all of the, the fundamental stuff in terms of who's right, who's wrong. I'm just looking at the data here. I'm not that interested in all of the court rulings for this video. What this is for is so that you can use it moving forward. Uh, should you see another bear market and then a bull market happen, you can come back to this video and just see how we got to the point of looking at three to seven week moves in a or on XRP. Now let's look at XLM briefly and just to see whether there's more potential in this than there is in XRP for gains, just for short term gains. So this chart doesn't have as much, but it has the volume. So Binance, Stellar, USDT. Now I've got XLM USD. This is on Capital.com, never heard of it. This just has the most price data. So we're getting close to the old all-time high on, uh, on Stellar. So Stellar's all-time high is at about 92 cents. This is getting closer to its all-time high, which shows me that there is a bit more strength in XLM. For whatever reason, people are just believing it a little more than they do XRP. I'm not going to comment too much more on that. I'm just using the data from the chart. So this is also getting higher. So I think there might be some sort of resistance coming up. We've seen it happen a lot with older cryptocurrencies, Ethereum, Zilliqa, Cardano, you know, they've all sort of ha have a very similar chart to this and they come up to their old all time highs. They pause for a bit, reaccumulate, whether it's just above the, the level or just below it. So we've seen it on Cardano. We will, we have seen it, like I just said, on Ethereum. See it, we've broken the all time high, but then we've started accumulating again just above it. Are we gonna see massive blow off from this point? Potentially, that's usually what happens when we get accumulation areas. Back to XLM, 62. We are still creeping up a little bit more. So again, I'll just measure my moves here. I've got about 10% to go until this area, until the all time high. I have about 46%, so it's not too bad. In terms of a fall, I think if it was to come back, I'm only looking at this area here of around 40 cents. So from 60 to 40, about 30 odd percent down. So it's not too bad, but it's not the best. But when I look at XLM BTC, this looks a lot better to me. We are back in one of these accumulation areas, which we just saw on XRP BTC and how it broke out. And just from this small move down here, we we're up 200% from the absolute low. From the breakout area, about 140%. So we're starting to get a little bit of a move on like that with XLM. Measuring from this area, about 50%. So this area is basically where the market held up. Now in terms of a breakout trade, you wanna see it break the high of the, the previous bar. I'm on a weekly chart as well, so I've been looking at this all on weeklies because it's a macro scale, not hourly charts, 15 minute charts, four hour charts, nothing like that. This is long term bigger moves. So, so far up from the break is about 30%. Now, this one still has a lot of resistance above these levels here. You can see it around 1200 Satoshis. And then the support continues to come in at about 500, call it 600 Satoshis, just to give it a nice round number between a 600 and a 1200 sats. As it breaks down underneath that level, it quickly shoots up on huge volume. And it's done it twice a breakdown, shoot back into the accumulation zone on very, very high volume. I've got another level here at around 900 because it was ranging between the six and the nine, tried at two, uh, 1200, broke back down, tried 1200 again, broke down, tried 1200 again, broke down. Are we gonna break it on the fourth time through? Generally, that's what happens. That's a GAN rule. On the fourth time, we tend to break. We could consider this a third time, one, two, three, four, and this might be the fifth. But I think overall, we may see XLM break these highs and then look to its next resistance level, which is this low here at around 2000. So from where we are now at 1000 Satoshis to there, a nice 90, 100% move. So we could look to double our Bitcoin on this move alone. There is a lot of uh, support here, which would be resistance now. And then again, back in early 2018, should we happen to get through that? Then again, we've got this nice, beautiful level here at around 28, 2900. So that could net us about 170%. So although some may have missed out on XRP, maybe they haven't, maybe they got in, maybe they've just been holding the whole time. I think there is a pretty good chance of this 
at least coming up to our 2000 Satoshis, if not around 2800, 2900 Satoshis. So although this is not financial advice, not a buy signal, I just say review these charts, keep these uh, on your watch lists, have some alerts, and then develop your plan to suit your risk reward. As we just looked at from XRP, if these things start to surge, they break levels, just measure how far it may have to go. And that's all we can do to look at our risk reward. We don't wanna be risking a lot of money at the top of trends like these levels when we have a huge risk beneath us where these things could just absolutely fall out and die. So that's XLM BTC. We've looked at XLM USD. We are getting to some levels up here. That's why I'm a little concerned, but again, risk reward. If we're gonna take the trade, just gotta be prepared for potential falls against us of about 40 to 60%. There's a 50% move. This is basically if you bought in at the top and we had a reversal, XLM has shown around 40 to 60%. So that's what we have to contend with just in case this is the top. Maybe it only moves up to 70 cents and hits resistance here. We had to move down into another zone again to accumulate into this little zone back here in March, February of around 40 cents. There's a 40% drop. So just be aware of that uh, in case you get scared out of your own position and you're seeing all your money fall back. These are the areas that you could potentially expect some sort of level of support. So that's XLM. The last thing I want to show you is XLM against XRP, which is a pretty interesting chart. Now, historically, there's not that much data here. I've only got it going back to 2020. I'm sure we could find something else if we dug a little bit deeper. But for now, this area of... So basically, this is XLM, Stellar, against XRP and their value. So currently, it's XLM is 45% value of XRP. So when we get to about a one-to-one -one ratio, XLM to XRP, it tends to dump. XLM tends to dump against XRP. So it's a better trade to be in XRP at that point. However, for now, XLM is very low in its historical range of not much data, but this is all we have to work with, between 30% and 50% value of XRP. So that's why that's another reason why I like a trade on XLM uh, compared to XRP at this point. So basically the summary of this is I see XRP is overvalued against XLM at the moment. So you know if you if you just want a long term hold and XRP is your thing, don't worry about this. But just looking at the, the data, when XLM is in this range, it might be in this range for a few months before it takes off. And it's only done it once. We can't say that it will do it again. But when I look at XLM USD, I think it has a stronger potential of breaking its all-time high and getting to a dollar. And that's where we see XRP at the moment. XRP is at about a dollar thirty. And so I do think it has the potential to rise to this point. Not sure when. We're looking at time frames as well, remember? This chart looks a little cleaner and a little safer than something like XRP, which has shown to pump and dump a lot. So XLM, that ticks the checks it off in my book there. We are in this range of being undervalued or in a medium range value against XRP. So XLM is in about an average range value against XRP, but we know it can go on some spikes against XRP. So if XRP happens to find resistance at those levels we were looking at against BTC chart, against its US dollar chart, and it's well basically because of the timeframes that it's taken for XRP to move up in this trend, that's why I think XLM might have a better chance at this point. Like I said, that's what, that's what I'm seeing here. That's what the data is pointing to at the moment. So if that made sense to you, let me know. I love doing these sorts of analysis on these cryptocurrencies because it just shows us which ones might be a better trade or a better hold at this point in time. It also shows which cryptos may be overvalued, especially when they go on these massive runs like we have seen with XRP at the moment. Pretty decent run up here to $1.50. And then if we measure it like we did against XRP BTC, we can get a solid understanding of timeframes of how long these runs might last. So that's it for XRP. Come back to this video, understand timeframes, understand price measures, of support and resistance using FIBS, 
XLM at the moment looks better. Let's see what history shows us. And then we'll refresh it on another video. I think we'll probably look at this in a couple of weeks of time, a couple of weeks time, going back into it in more detail like this. But for now, let's take a look at that trade. I'm liking XLM over XRP for now. Let me know what you think down below comments, like the video up if you found some value from it, subscribe to the channel if you want to understand more analysis like this using time and price comparing cryptocurrencies, you know what to do. Bell notification icon. I'll see you guys at the next video. Before I do that, follow me on Twitter. DeFi looks like it is the sector for April, which we also covered in early April and late March. We were picking it through here. I've got a DeFi video. Anyway, you get the idea. It's all back here on the channel. Subscribe to that. Uh, the other thing is New Brighton Capital. You guys that are in Australia want to set up your SMSF, your self-managed super fund, go over it. There's a link in the description. You get 300 bucks off or $300 credit if you sign up and use your super fund, your retirement fund, and you want to set that up to purchase cryptocurrency with that. Last thing is BlockFi, zero affiliate links. So if you want to use this, get up to $250 crypto bonus for when you deposit more than 25 bucks. You'll need to deposit about $25,000 for that. Just remember that, but you deposit something smaller, 25 bucks there. So it's pretty decent, 8% APY on your stable coins. And then on Bitcoin is around five to 6%. So go and check that out. There's a link in the description as well for BlockFi. That's it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. XRP, XLM. Check out Litecoin, Cardano, Ethereum, Bitcoin, all of the big stuff and using timeframes and price analysis. I'll see you at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done. Peace out.